morning YouTube. I'm just thinking about the language around antinatalism and uh, when there's a way of making it slightly more complex without making it more confusing. And uh, what I've been thinking of is partly in relation to uh, theism and atheism and whether any of the language from that uh, set of arguments can be brought to bear again. And the one I'm thinking of right now is the, is the descriptions of uh, atheism as either strong or weak, or uh, sometimes positive and negative. I think Anthony Flew calls it positive and negative or something. But, um, and he's talking about atheism, and I think the same kind of thing can be said, not so much of uh, antinatalism, but of natalism. So let me just see if I can play that out. What I'm saying is that this, because I'll just backtrack a wee bit. The, um, you know, antinatalism as a term is, at least in this small community uh, where we reside, antinatalism as a term is far more prevalent than natalism. Yeah, it does, it, 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 people use the term antinatalism, people tend not to use the term natalism. It's underdefined in many ways. And, uh, and a better definition of that might be profitable in terms of what antinatalism means. And I think the, the definitions and the discussions around the term natalism could include this borrowing from strong and weak or positive and negative atheism. Right, let me just see if I can flesh that out in terms of atheism first. Positive and negative atheism refer to different kind of um, approaches to atheism, different reasons to be an atheist. Um, a negative atheist lacks a belief in a god. A positive atheist has an active belief that there is no god. So one's passive and one's active. One's negative, it's simply an absence, and one's positive, it's the presence of, uh, of a belief in no god. Uh, and as I say, they're also sometimes referred to as strong and weak. So strong atheism is the strong belief that there is no god. Weak atheism is weak because, as I say, it simply lacks belief in God. They, they are often confused, but they're, they're, I think it makes sense, that distinction. So does the same thing apply to natalism? And could antinatalism be seen as a, as a response to that? I think it does. Uh, positive natalism isn't really talked about much, but it, it, it kind of does exist. Positive natalism would be the, the active belief that having children is a good thing. The active belief. And perhaps even uh, promoting policy and promoting activities and behaviours which lead to the furtherance of that belief. So it might be something like the Quiverful organisation in the States, which is a, an organisation, I think it's a religious right organisation, I think. But it actively promotes the, uh, the positive value of having lots of children. Quiverful, a full quiver of arrows, that kind of thing. Uh, so that would be, a, that would be, I think, would be an example of positive natalism. And I believe, although again, I'm not absolutely sure my facts here, I believe during the Second World War, certainly during the Hitler regime, uh, women were given medals, I think. There was a mother's cross. Women were given medals for having a certain number of children. And you, you know, you got a little, a little cross with the Fuhrer's name etched on the back, I think, if you had ten children. So again, it's positive natalism. It's the active belief that having lots of children is a good thing, necessarily so, and perhaps one which in that case is rewarded or at least is, is given us esteem by the by this kind of state-mandated esteem. And I think probably even older, there's probably even older ideas. I was listening to a documentary about um, mercantilism, I think it was called, which was a, a kind of state philosophy that having a large population is a good thing, particularly if most of those that population is living at the poverty line. Just so there's lots of workers for your industry and lots of, um, of cannon fodder for your armies, really. It's, it's, it's that kind of approach, which again would offer a, a, a philosophy and ideology that having children was in and of itself a positive thing, which could be rewarded and so on. So that's positive. It's all positive. It's active. You know, you know you're, in, you're in the game there and you know you're doing something. Negative natalism, on the other hand, or weak natalism, would be the lack of a belief that um, the lack of a belief that natal, that having children is a bad thing, something like that. Can't quite work that out in my head right now. It's very early in the morning, but it would be the absence of a belief. It'd be a much more passive, much more um, uh, unthinking kind of, uh, of response. And I think that's I think that would probably be the default setting actually for most people. It, we, we don't think that. Natalism either is either a good thing or a bad thing. We just don't think about it. Um, we don't 
for the most part, I think, unless we're in a very particular circumstance, um, propel ourselves into that thought process, which will think, yes, having children is in and of itself always a good thing, or mostly a good thing, or alternatively a bad thing. We just tend not to think about it. Um, particularly when we're young, you know, I mean, I was, uh, well, I was quite young when I had my first child, and it wasn't the last thing on my mind. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's it really. Positive and negative natalism. Does it make any sense? And what would be the implications for antinatalism? Thank you.